As we're now approaching the end of 2023, entering into the winter months here in Portugal, rains have come and gone for the most part, at least for now. Days are getting vastly shorter and darker. I started the bookcase building project for the entryway to our kitchen pantry space, but as you'll see in a future video, I simply was unimpressed and dissatisfied with how they turned out, so I decided to take them back down. We'll most likely use them as storage cabinets maybe for tools or other woodworking elements so I don't waste that, that wood and that, that time of course. But that means I'm now starting from scratch and have now put this kitchen remodel completion off by at least another month or so. But in the meantime, as I'm awaiting more plywood to rebuild those bookcases, I decided that I had some leftover pieces that I could use for another okay. fun project idea so, I had. Our good friends over here, Gil and Karn, are awaiting the birth of their first child, a baby girl, for Christmas. Uh, build them a cradle for their newly arriving little baby girl. So I just went ahead and ripped two of these pieces of two inch plywood. And then I went ahead and designed this little cradle here. You could see maybe a little all a Viking ship-esque, true to my, uh, my heritage, but you know, I think it'll be nice and cute. And then I'm gonna cut two eyelet holes here that you can string uh, rope together. That way they can actually be suspended from a beam in their house and they can do a nice little little rocking rocking ship. <laughs> As a side note, which really does not bear any motivation on my part, but uh, there apparently there's a hunt for who is going to become the godfather of this unborn beautiful little princess. I think I'm going to be in a lead after this. So let's go ahead and take the jigsaw to it and see if we can Roughly carve this bad boy out. very rough cut of the first template that I'll then mimic on to the next piece of plywood. Okay, so got both of these sides for the most part roughed out, uh, sanded and smoothed a little bit. They're not obviously 100% identical, but pretty darn close. So now the goal is to make little slats along the bottom. That's going to create the base for where little baby's going to be cradled. Well, it's early December and I've decided I've got too many projects going at the same time right now with the kitchen bookcase pantry 
build out with a little uh, secret shelf. Um, there's some bookcases I'm building as well for the landing for the future library. Uh, too many things going on, too much of a mess. I just got some more wood as you see right here behind me. And obviously I don't wanna leave that uh, the way it is, but three very large uh, plywood pieces um, that I wanna actually get more on the horizontal plane for uh, storage for the next couple of weeks until I can get to them. So I am going to do a little bit of cleanup in the workshop, which has been long overdue. You can see here, just a quick little pre- that's all you get. <laughs> My wife will kill me if I show you guys how messy it is, but let's do a little time-lapse video of cleaning the space up once and for all. So the previous owners left uh, a bunch of furniture in this house, um, which I guess is not uncommon for the Portuguese. They, a lot of times we just leave, you know, kitchen hutches and beds, bed frames, you name it. Here's a table that I think might have been in the kitchen. I actually can't remember where this was, but it's a really nice table. Um, but I think I may end up using this for my table saw. It's a little bit shorter than... Uh, the table saw that I bought uh, by about two and a half inches, but uh, that way at least I can run long sheets of plywood and it'll just, you know, cruise right onto here. I'll obviously put a, a sheet of plywood or something on top of this to pretend. I have this old, old table. I think this is an old 200 year old, maybe farm table from my grandparents or great grandparents uh, farm, I guess, great grandparents would be. It has been in our family for the last 20, 30 years. So again, throw a sheet of plywood on top of it uh, or particle board just to protect the surface. And that could actually make for a really nice workstation for the next couple months. Okay, so we got the holes drilled here, and basically what this cradle is gonna do is gonna be able to be on the ground rocking, or we're gonna buy some very thick rope and have this come up into one, I think, main rope. That way they can hang it from a rafter in their living room and just kind of sway the baby to sleep. At least that's the idea, so. And I got to figure out how to get these end pieces here set in um, and then traced out for all the slats of wood that's going to go in the bottom here, making the base for the crib. So let's uh, let's see if we can figure that one out. So kind of the general idea, putting these guys at the end, and then we're gonna put little slat pieces on the bottom to create the base, but 
I'm actually surprised <laughs> that it rocks as well as it does. Holy moly. Huh. Okay, I'm impressed. Got these routered and chiseled out so these will be the slots for where the first brackets are going to go into so hopefully that'll that'll hold nice and uh, I'll screw them in from the other side Quick dry run, screwing these guys back in here in the back, just to make sure everything fit. And she is rocking away. Little wooden plugs are in place. I actually think it really gives it a nice, nice cool look. Okay, so we're on probably like day three or four of this uh, little project here. Been a lot of sanding and trying just to fine tune the Thor hammer cutouts here, but now I'm working on the base and I'm using these same wooden planks, uh, floor planks that I use for the ceiling in the kitchen. Had a little bit of scrap left over, so. So I really didn't like how the staples were coming out. It didn't look really good. So I had a thought about interweaving these guys like a basket. I'll keep them nice and conjoined and tight over time. So I don't have the spacing between because I do like how they interlock. I think I might router out just a little bit of an edge. That way the straps can smoothly go through those little, uh, little rivets, I guess. Um, and we can still allow for these boards to interlock. So let's see, let's see if I can make that happen. Okay, so I whipped up this little temporary jig that will be pretty much the width of these straps. And I went ahead and just tried it out on a scrap piece. And other than the wood kind of splintering a little bit, which we can sand away, that actually looks pretty good. A little deeper than I think I need it, so I might reduce the depth a little bit. No, that's perfect. That, uh, that strap then when I put the boards together, the idea at least is it'll go right through there like so. So let's, uh, let's get all these pieces here routed out and get it assembled. Okay, so I got four of these routed out. And here is the general idea. This will be the back that's gonna sit flush up against the back of the crib. And then just interweave these guys. So I got two more to go, but uh, unfortunately, uh, yep, dinner calls. So I gotta get upstairs and make some dinner. So I will carry on tomorrow.
can see how the straps are gonna go in. Just got done getting them all stapled in the back and put a couple extra screws right down there. That's gonna be hidden once it goes into the base of the crib. So won't be able to see those, but just a little extra support to keep these guys in place. So hopefully that'll give it long lasting effect. Well, it's been pretty much an entire day of just getting this thing set in. It's uh, kept falling apart and whatnot. So, but I've got it set. And now I'm gonna put some brackets up underneath to hold the weight of the baby. Um, we've got it screwed in here. I'm gonna put on the same little button dowels that I did out here. That'll cover those screw holes, so. But holy moly, this has been a labor of love and not a lot of love. <laughs> Okay, so the task for the day, I think we're on day six now. This is pretty much ready for stain. Uh, I got these guys sitting here. I'm gonna do a little bit more bracketing underneath just to support the weight. But I've got these, uh, all the branches that I've cut these discs out of from the, the farm here. Um, I think we'll do like a shield and uh, glue these guys onto the side, have my youngest daughter paint them up. So just working on sanding these guys. This is pretty much oops, what they look like. Very rough, but they've been drying out for quite a few weeks now, a couple months, I think. So I think they should be good to go. So yeah, we'll see how these guys turn out. Pieces here nicely routered and cleaned up and sanded. Um, basically, these are going to be just extra support. Uh, then I'll then put some screws into the side here and cover those up with some wooden dowels. That way, you know, just making sure that this base here can handle you know the weight of a baby growing into a toddler. So, just being mindful of that, but also trying to make it look a little bit more appealing underneath. So. All the screws and the dowels have been set, sanded, and I figured why not just fill in those extra little brad nail holes that I put in to hold the support here. So we're gonna let this glue dry up and you know glue for, I don't know, maybe 24 hours, leave it clamped. I've got other things to do, so come back tomorrow, give it a good final fine sanding. And uh, then I think we're, we're ready for stain, hopefully. All right, we are at staining day. So we had picked out, or I picked out a color yesterday, which just didn't really have the feel that I was looking for. You know, I really wanted to go for kind of an old, very antique -y type of cradle look. Um, so we went down to the hardware store late last night and picked up a more deeper, rich, kind of a chocolatey, brown almost if you can see that so that will be the color that we're going to apply onto the cradle here this morning so let's get going on that
Okay, very, very pleased with how this came out. This was definitely the rich, dark chocolate that I was looking for. So I'll let this dry up and uh, see how it absorbs into the wood. And then uh, I don't think I'll need a second coat because this really looks nice and rich. Um, but then I'll flip it over and do the do the underside. But we're gonna leave the center part here natural. Uh, I really like the look of, of these boards here. So maybe we'll do like a linseed just to seal them. Uh, keep it nice and natural for the baby. Well, this is the young expecting couple that I made this Viking baby cradle for. They become such great friends and we really wanted to do something special for them. So in addition to the cradle, my wife Julie made them their very first baby blanket as well. Something a friend did for us uh, when we first became parents that we cherished for years with both our first and our second born. Gil and Karn have run an incredible vacation retreat here in Portugal, a, a wonderful place for families with children to enjoy the scenery, relaxation, food, etc. Also couples for quiet getaways or even solo travelers wanting to meet other like-minded individuals while traveling abroad. There's always so much activity and events planned for guests during their stay. They've really carved out a, a very unique niche for themselves when it comes to vacation hospitality getaways. So go check out their website at Land of the Bay com as they do both yoga and corporate retreats as well. <laughs> Baby lines <lingerie>? Ray? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you make that? Uh -huh. yeah. No it's way. Baby uh -huh. That's why it's more neutral. <laughs> I started it a while ago. We didn't know what the sex was. Yeah. I mean, I, I knew what it was. <laughs> Wow, wow, thank you. Wow. That's beautiful. That's so awesome. <laughs> okay. All right, you can open. Whoa! Whoa. Whoa. Baby cradle. Whoa. No way. Wow, that is awesome. That is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you guys make this? No, he did. Wow. You made it? Yeah. Darren painted it. Last couple it. weeks. Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs>